Good evening, everybody, and thank you all so much for coming. I'm Lisa okay. Muscatine. I'm one of the co-owners of I'm one of the founders, along, along with Carla Cohen. Cohen. Uh, Bradley Graham, the co-owner of Politics and Pros. and Cohen, and, and I'm the husband of Carla Cohen, who was the founder of Politics and Pros. It was just it was just a fluke. People thought at that time of opening an independent bookstore was just completely crazy. It was at a time that. Uh, bookstores were beginning to fall victim to the chain stores. The, what was lacking in the chains was a knowledge and an appreciation and the love of books. And that if you convey that love of books in a uh, bricks and mortar store, you could accomplish something. It is an indomitable part of the fabric of the nation's capital. And then it spreads, it spreads out, you know, from the authors who come and give their readings, you know, then they take the aura of politics and prose back to their local community. I came back to D.C. in 1984, the year that, I, it was just two months before politics and prose opened. I needed a job, I was reading the classified ads, and there was an advertisement for a bookstore manager. I had had my own bookstore, um, and uh, I, knew the, I knew the book business, so I knew the whole, um, I, I knew it from every angle. And so I was exactly what Carla was looking for, and I was sure that when she read my letter, it was to write a letter to a blind P.O. box, which I did, I was sure when she, read, when she read it that she would call me up immediately. And you know what? At 9, 10 the next morning, the telephone rang, and it was Carla. <laughs> she had a sense that there was something missing, uh, that the chains were soulless, and uh, the bookstore chains were soulless, and that, um, uh, that there was a place for a community kind of institution uh, that valued books. Carla also know, knew what she didn't know, and that's where Barbara comes into the picture, um, first as a manager and then as a partner, and, and the two were really married together uh, for, for 25 uh, years. We always felt that there were so many people out in um, Forest Hills, Cleveland Park, Chevy Chase, D.C., who would, would be our ideal customer if only we could get them into the store. So that was all there where we focused our energies uh, with by, mostly by a wide uh, spectrum of author events that would just appeal to a lot of different interests so that maybe if we were lucky that everybody who lived within a mile, two mile radius of politics and prose would have been to politics and prose for one author event that they were interested in and then they'd be back. One of my favorite things that we've ever been able to do is, or rather one of the things I've enjoyed the most about seeing politics and prose and being a part of it is authors who grew up shopping here coming here as novelists and being sort of praised by the literary community, whether it's Anthony Marr or Elliot Holt. This place built that for them and so to watch them sort of come home in a way to do presentations for their novels or um, and to sort of see them like these are good novels and politics and prose put you on the track to becoming this novelist and you know all these first time novels that are now coming to fruition that maybe the scribbles started here in the cafe or downstairs in the children's department. It's very satisfying. <laughs> I have contemplated moving you know further away from the bookstore. You know, and then that night, I'll be thinking, but man, I won't be able to get up and walk to politics and prose, which is very important in my life. And so, and so, the bookstore actually is just another tentacle, a spiritual, a spiritual tentacle of my life. I came here with, um 
two books published, two novels published, and a, and a third underway. And as I say, with small kids who I needed to entertain <laughs> so that I could get back to writing the novel. Uh, so, for, you know, it, to a great extent, um, you know, the majority of, of the work that I've done, I've done here in the Washington area. Um, and coming to politics and prose has been a big part of, um, of my life as a writer. In, in this area, well, one of the uh, one of the things that I have heard uh, a number of times, and it's really it's uh, been very touching uh, for me, is authors saying that during the time that they were writing their their book, that what kept them going, and and finally got them to finish was that their intermittent fan fantasies the whole time of the evening that they were going to be a politics and prose for their book event. It would break my heart if they didn't ask me to come <laughs> and do a reading for my next book. So. <laughs> well, I think the greatest challenge where that I put most of my ener energies was in maintaining a good, um, uh, harmonious partnership. You had to have a good, strong, harmonious partnership for the store to do well. The ability to adapt to change is is critical. Um, I think Carl and Barbara picked up very early um, the Amazon effect, and uh, and they made adjustments. And um, I, th I think that ability to adjust, uh, Mark Laffern Poise, when he spoke at Carla's memorial service at Politics and Prose, um, um, spoke about Carla always talking about the importance of changing, 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 not standing pat. Obviously, when Carla passed away, uh, and then uh, another big change when new owners took over the store and many longtime customers came up and said, please don't change. And at Carla's memorial, I mentioned that uh, Carla would have gotten angry at those words because Carla was always about change. Carla was always about if something um, had been felt even the least bit stale, you change it. Even if it's successful, you change it. And part of that was growing the store, but part of it was uh, trying a different way to do the print calendar, even though she was winning awards with the uh, print calendar that we had already. Um, but it was always keep it fresh, keep it new, always change. And, uh, and I know people only meant well when they said don't change. They were all just only saying uh, how much they loved us and how much they loved the store. Um, but the store's always been about change. So the store uh, growing in positive changes with uh, Brad and Lissa um, is all stuff that uh, Carla would have smiled on and she would have approved of, I think. I think the really hard part inheriting a store like this that is such an iconic place in the life of this community and had, at least in the case of Carla, especially very, very visible, almost a force of nature kind of personality who was the visionary behind it and the kind of public face of the store. And Barbara obviously was, you know, the genius at work as well, but, um, you know, a, a less uh, visible personality. And so I think the challenge inheriting something like that is to make sure that people understand that it can't be the same. You know, we are not Barbara and Carla. We could never be Barbara and Carla. We don't want to be Barbara and Carla because we couldn't possibly be Barbara and Carla. And so you do have to find what's comfortable for your own personality and your own values. Um, but at the same time, it was really important to us to retain the ethos of the store, to retain the essence of what Made, makes it great and made it great to retain what their vision was for it, which really is relevant, sort of, and enduring. And so, um, it's finding that balance between you know retaining what makes the place special and is familiar and comfortable to patrons and to people who support the store, and at the same time knowing that it has to move forward in different ways and has to have some new, new possibilities and new paths, and and to, to a lesser extent a new identity. I wouldn't say it's a whole new identity, but certainly you know it has a slightly different flavor and character. And I think patrons have commented on that and in a positive way. I mean, I think people were ready to have it, you know, have PNP try some new things. Yeah, I think one of the things that we brought to the store is that 
a little broader strategic vision uh, about some of the activities and services that the store could be providing, whether it's classes or trips or a, a, a print-on-demand machine. Um, and and an, another thing that, that we brought to the store was to try to, when it, when it comes to our events, um, represent as broad a spectrum of opinion um, as, as possible, and particularly to, to reach out a little more for, to, to, to some, now and then anyway, some conservative voices. You've got to be open-minded. You have to be open-minded to, to, to uh, ideas that you disagree with because you have to listen and you might even learn something. Um, but you certainly have to create space for that. And, and so that's, that's a huge, huge value. And to me, that value has continued under uh, Brad and Lissa. Uh, they, have, they have very much made politics and prose uh, continuing as a source of uh, civil discourse in, 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 in the community and in the country, and it stands as a, as a center of that. Politics and Prose has had, both as authors and booksellers, we've been a tremendous uh, refuge. Lissa was um, at the same point in her life that I was at the, in my life when I arrived back in Washington and was casting around for the next uh, chapter in my life. You know, we didn't plan on never dreamed of owning a bookstore we never planned on it and then when the opportunity came it was you know it was something that uh, really did seem to be a, a great time in our lives and our careers to do something that was on the one hand very different but on the other hand very connected to what we both had done and what we both care about but there are also many many who have come to us in their life at uh, a time when they needed a way station my store in Colorado changed ownership and I let it be known that I was looking to move and Carla uh, in typical fashion said Mark if you'll come to Washington I'll pay your moving expenses and you come live at my house so she removed the fears the fears of how will I get there and what will I do when I get there I wanted to fall in love with books again after having done a graduate degree and I wanted to read books for the sake of reading them and see the value in that, um, in addition to having spent years writing about them in a very sort of aggressive way. I wanted to see the other side of books, the people who read them for reading's sake, and also what goes into making a book and the publishing process. And so being a part of that community right away was very startling um, and exciting because it really, really did make me remember why books actually matter to begin with. So that's kind of what p and did for me. Made me remember why I liked the book to begin with. Yeah. You know, and I, th I think more and more um, we realize that there, there aren't a lot of places where you can gather with like-minded people <laughs> and, and really sort of talk about the life of the mind, which you know, for me is poetry and novels and nonfiction and um, the written word. Um, and there is something, uh, something really delightful and heartening about a brick and mortar place um, that's dedicated to the thing that is so essential to your own life. Something that is in the atmosphere at the store that seems to uh, contain a lot of guardian angels that look out for a lot of people who are at politics and prose. I think the idea is for it always to be a welcoming place, and um, whether it's the, the the easy chairs where some, sometimes you can find a seat, most of the time you can't because someone else is there, uh, or just being able to browse uh, creates an, an excitement. I found, uh, I mean, talking about personal, one time I wasn't present for this, Carla was with our daughter Eve in San Francisco and they were talking in line waiting to go into a museum and some guy comes up and says, I recognize your voice, you're, you're Carla Cohen, I see you on C-SPAN <laughs> when they do C-SPAN events. So that, you know, those are great, great memories and those kinds of story, stories will continue and uh, staff members will have their stories and 
Lisa and Brad will have their stories that will come and be gratifying. I would say that in my hope for the store for 30 years from now is that as the world becomes more homogenized culturally and as people find their existences narrowed to what they do on a screen and digitally and less in contact with other human beings, the desire for a place like politics in prison, even the yearning for a place like politics in prison will only grow. Now that may be a fantasy, but I can imagine that happening in a world where people have much more impersonal, almost dehumanizing kinds of everyday lives and they really crave the kind of human interaction and the feeling of being part of a community and being in a physical space and in a place that gives them some sense of, of who they are and what they care about. And that's what we do at this store. And so hopefully that feeling will continue to be important to people and they'll com continue and maybe even greater numbers want to come here. And I, you know, the other thing I would just say is that as long as people care about that and care about books and buying books and reading books and care about the sort of customer service that we provide and that personal interaction and the curatorial expertise and the opportunity to meet an author face to face and to have a class with people who are interested in the same sort of thing, I think the store's future is incredibly bright. I mean, we're here because the community supports us. And as long as the community supports us and we can read the needs of the community and the tastes and appetites of the community, you know, I think the future is, is very strong.